Aloha and welcome to Knitted Paradise, where the needles are clicking and the yarn is squishy. My name is Lucia, I'm your hostess, and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Pearl of the Pacific. Today is Monday, June 2nd, and this is episode 28. And I don't exactly know what I'm going to call it, but I'll figure it out soon. So welcome to any new viewers, thank you for checking me out, and welcome back to any returning viewers returning viewers. I'm glad to have you back. Uh, the best ways to watch me, you can watch me on YouTube. Uh, you can subscribe to the channel and that'll give you updates. You can also find me on my website, which is pearlofthepacific.info, or on the Ravelry group, which is Knitted Paradise Podcast. And often I post links to the YouTube video there. Um, usually I put show notes in all places as well. So, Let's get started with Blow the Conch Shell. Today is the second day of June, so the main knit along has concluded. And since this is my second time starting this recording, I've already pulled a winner, and it was number seven, which is Hot Pink Socks. And she knit a lovely green shawl out of Spring Lily Green. I think it was the salad shawl. Anyway, go check it out. It's gorgeous. It's this bright, like, it's not... It's a little brighter than grass green, but it's not quite lime green. So, go check it out. Uh, so we've started the June knit along now, and I thought up a theme today, because I hadn't thought of this before, and it's going to be fruit. I went into my friend's office today and I said, okay, what color do you associate with June? And he said peach. And I said, well, it's kind of a a niche color. Not everyone has peach yarn that they want to knit with. But I thought, hey, what about fruit? So anything that has to do with fruit. So it's kind of similar to the flower theme, except it's fruit. So if you have some peaches and cream cotton yarn that you'd like to knit with, that would work. Um, stuff like that. Or if you have like Granny Smith apple green yarn that you want to knit with. So just post a picture in the finished object thread and explain how it fits into the theme. So if you have any questions, you can always post in the chatter thread and I'm happy to answer, you know, oh, does this fit or does it not fit? Or, or if you just want to show awesome pictures, I'm okay with that too. So let's see, that's it for announcements. Uh, so, oh, Hot Pink Socks, contact me with your address, and I have some prize yarn for you. I, I stashed out Dove today, and I picked out some Pima Cotton. I think it's Baroque Pima Cotton in Key Lime Pie, I think. Either that, or I, ha I think I have some Plum Yarn. I'm going to call those fruit. They have seeds, so it's fruit. It's close enough, right? Okay, anyway, so if you don't like key lime green, I think I have some purple cotton yarn. That's called Plum. So let me know. And that's that. I'm sorry that the lighting is all funky. I'm trying a new place. I'm in the office library, I guess you'd call it. The bird room. We also have the birds. I've covered them up, so hopefully they don't make too much noise. During the first recording, they were making a lot of noise. And then the computer froze, so I didn't get too far, so that's okay. So let's start with On the Island. There's not a whole lot, honestly. <laughs> um, I've been very busy. I did finish something, so you'll see that later. Uh, but we had the big choral festival last weekend, and that had I had a lot of knit time, knitting time during that because I was sitting down and singing for three days straight, uh, and then performing. So then I had to stand and sing, and which was awesome, but I couldn't knit during the show, because it's kind of obvious when you're standing on the risers with 200 other people, and you have to pay attention to the conductor, obviously. It's a choral festival. Anyway, that was really fun. My mother-in-law was in town, um, mm -hmm. so things got a little crazy. Oh, um. sorry. We'll have to uh, answer that later. Um, so things got really crazy, which is why I didn't have time to record until now, but my husband's at Tall Order Rehearsal, I have the apartment to myself, I just finished up some laundry, I was like, you know what, I'm going to sit down and record. So, 
let's get started with some knitting. Um, on the island, I have the tulip socks that were supposed to be for last month's knit along, but I never got around to it. And as you know, I do all 99% of my socks toe up at two at a time, but this pattern is written cuff down and you can't reverse it. I tried, trust me. But I loved it so much that I am knitting them top down and I'm doing two at a time kind of because they're on two different needles. Uh, I'll like knit a repeat on one and then knit it on the other. But that is the pattern and it is out of another crafty girl strong sock in the lost souls I believe. Maybe the color will show. It's really hard. It's a tonal focus. It's a tonal turquoisey greeny blue kind of aqua color. Sea glass maybe? I don't know how to describe it. That's pretty close. But they're turning out really well. They're a little tight. I've been trying to get them over my heel. They're a little, they'll go over my heel. Oh, sorry, it's my voicemail. Um, but they're a little tight, so I don't know. I don't really want to rip them out and re-knit them, but I may. <laughs> I tend to do that more often than most people, because I really want them to fit right. But I'm really loving that pattern, and I'm loving the yarn. I've knit with her yarn before and loved it. So, let's move it over here so I can see this. That's really what's on the needles. That's all I've really been working on besides the thing that I finished. So let's show you the finished object. I finished my sweater. Ta-da. And this is the Chimera, oh, that makes me really yellow. Chimera Cardigan by Amy Herzog out of Cascade Sport in Jet. So it's like this nice grayish, black this is not what it looks like at all that's a little closer anyway it's mostly black it's got a little bit of gray heathering in it though but it fits perfectly so during the coral festival or right before the coral festival I had this doesn't really work with a t-shirt but whatever um, during the coral festival, let's try to make that color go away. Um, I knit both sleeves, which is pretty much the entire thing. You're supposed to knit them one at a time flat. I knit them two at a time in the round because that's what I do. Um, I'm sorry, I'm so yellow. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, so that was pretty much the entire. I finished during the first day of the coral festival. I finished the other front because I'd finished one before the coral festival started and then I finished the second front and then I did the sleeves and that's all I did um, which took a long time now I know why people get aggravated at sleeves they take forever anyway they're the perfect length this is where I like my sleeves they're a little longer than normal so and there's these nice cables that go all the way up to the front and down the back on both sides and I'm gonna take this off because it's really hot it's wool I did wear it <laughs> it was really funny I finished it I finished it I think the day the day the Sunday of the coral festival so last Sunday and I that I think the next morning I see I um that night I blocked the fronts and finished up the sleeves and the next day on Memorial Day I seamed it all up and then I just wore it around without the button bands because I just wanted to wear my sweater because I was so excited that it fit. I was like telling everybody, look I finished my sweater. And then uh, the next day at, um, during my lunch break at work I did the neck band and then I went to tall order rehearsal with my husband and mother-in-law and I did the the two or the yeah the two button bands I guess finished those up um, washed and blocked it that night and or maybe the next no I wore it the next day I cast it off 
Wednesday morning and wore it to work unblocked. Well, the back and the two fronts had been blocked, but the button bands and the sleeves had not when I was just so excited. <laughs> and there weren't any buttons on it either, but I wore it to work anyway. Um, and then I washed it and blocked it that night, and the next day, Thursday, I head off because it was a, uh, a holy day. Um, I work for the Baha'i faith, and we get holy days off, so it's pretty awesome. Anyway, my mother-in-law was really excited to help me pick out buttons, so we went to the big fabric store. Uh, we took a nice walk because it was nice out. Uh, it's like a few blocks that way. To the fabric store and looked at a lot of buttons and finally settled on these. Let me show them to you. Ta -da! It was funny because I was looking at all these buttons and I was like, oh my god, I don't know what to pick. And then the ones that I really liked were like $2 a piece, and I was like, I need 11 buttons, and I don't know, can't pay $2 for 11 buttons. And then I saw these, and I was like, oh, those are perfect. And then I like, 25 cents, even better. So, these are the buttons. Maybe it will focus. But they're, they're the shiny black, they've got a little bit of uh, patterning in them. Maybe you will focus one day. Anyway. Maybe. Oh. We're getting better. But you can see there's a little bit of patterning. They're shiny, so they're hard to see. Anyway, and then I got some grow grain ribbon, just plain black, and sewed it. Oh, Jesus, that button's... Now I'm looking at the back and the buttons are all over the place. I was tired when I did this, but so I just sewed some grow grain ribbon on. The first time I did it, I did it way too long. Um, so I guess I did this on Friday and the button band was like way too long. And so I'd rip it out and uh, sewed it on shorter. It's a little too short, but I think I'm just going to deal with it. Um, I do need to move one of the buttons. You'll notice this one is a little, needs to be a little higher. But other than that, I sewed on my 11 buttons, which is a lot of buttons. And uh, I wore it over the weekend on and off when it was, because it was cool at night. But, ta da! So this is the back. Let me button up some things in the front here, and then maybe you can see it a little better. Ooh, now I'm like bright orange. That's the back. So, the cables actually show up fairly well considering it's black, but I am really, really excited about that sweater. And as soon as I gas it off, I may or may not have browsed a bazillion sweaters on Ravelry and picked out my next sweater. So, uh, my next sweater is going to be the Ginny Cardigan. I know a lot of people have knit that's from like the unofficial Harry Potter Knits magazine, which I do have. Um, so, and I do have yarn for it. So, I'm a project knitter, so I pick out project and then buy yarn. So. I'm going to see about winding that tonight, although I do have to do um, some other things to clean up after Mom was here. It was good. We were really excited to have her here, but also it's really exhausting to have house guests. It was really good because it made us get our apartment in order. Because, like, three weeks ago, this room was still fairly full of boxes that we had not unpacked. So it was good that we had to create a place for her to sleep. So, oh, maybe we should unpack all those boxes. The joys of moving. Anyway, so everything's pretty much unpacked now, which is nice. And now we're just trying to find places for everything. But we're here for another year. So we're good. We got time. Um, I think that's really it. I mean, the tulip socks... The Chimera cardigan, the Ginny cardigan, that's really it, it's not that exciting. <laughs> Hopefully I'll have more in a couple weeks. Um, yeah, as, as I told you last time, I'm going to Prague 
during the last like week and a half of June. So I'm trying to get um, all my knitting in order for that kind of set up. Uh, I won't wound a bunch of sock yarn, although now I may end up taking a sweater. Uh, I really wanted to finish that sweater before our, my trip because I wanted to take it with me. Because sometimes it gets cold there in June, which is random. But sometimes at night when we're out, it gets chilly. So that was my big push. And then I was just so excited that now I want to cast on all the sweaters. So, And I have some sweaters worth of yarn. And I don't really knit that many sweaters. So I was like, you know, I'm going to really push myself to knit some sweaters this year. So I've knit one. And I have plans for a few more. And I also have to fix the sweater that I knit for my husband last year. I didn't really know what I was doing. And I modified the neck of the pattern a little bit because he didn't want the zipper all the way down. He just wanted buttons up here. And so I kind of modified it and it didn't work as well as I wanted it to. So I'm going to have to redo that. But other than that, I don't really think I have a whole lot. If you guys have questions about the sweater, um, feel free to ask. I did follow the pattern pretty closely. I mean, it's from the Knit to Flatter book. So I did a lot of reading in that book about, uh, you know, how to measure yourself. Then I did my gauge swatch and I figured out, you know, my stitch gauge was right, but my row gauge wasn't. And so I, I modified that by adding a few more rows between increases and decreases. Also, I have a very long torso and very short legs. So, um, and I like my sweaters a little long anyway, so it was kind of nice to have that extra length. Um, I added a couple inches to what they, you know, they said knit to 14 inches, and I knit to like 15 or 16, just because I'm weirdly proportioned that way. That's the way it is. And so, yeah, the other, the only other modif big modification was that I knit the sleeves in the round. Um, so I went up a couple sizes because I know in the round gauge is tighter than flat gauge. So I cast on a couple sizes bigger and then just kind of tried it on as I went. It was like, oh, I need to do, you know, I did increases about every 10 rows or something. And that worked out well. And somehow it all seamed up. And I did mattress stitch up the side. Let me find the side. Is that the side? Yeah, you can't, that's the nice thing about mattress stitch is you can't see it. I mean, you can see it because of the light, but if you look at it with no light behind it, just on the surface, you can't really see that seam. Minus that one thing that the cat probably pulled out. But you can't really see the seam unless you look at it with light behind it. So that was actually a lot easier. I just went on YouTube and looked up seaming and uh, kind of figured out how to do the shoulder seams. And I'm actually quite proud of my shoulder seams. Considering I don't really know what I'm doing. And my sleeve seams were pretty good. So I'm pretty proud of myself because I haven't done this a whole lot. <laughs> Some people are really good at it. I'm not. So... I'm really excited about my sweater and my really orange face. <laughs> anyway, I could babble on for a while, but I'll give you guys a kind of shorter episode and hopefully I'll have more knitting. I, as I said, I don't know, ages ago, I knit in batches, so I'm kind of at the end of my batch. And I think the next big batch of cast-ons will be right before I leave for Prague. But I'm trying to, you know, finish things up before I leave for Prague. So I'm probably just going to knit monogamous, monogamously on these socks for the next week to get those finished up. Probably before I cast on the sweater. Um, I might wind it up and do the, the gauge swatch. But other than that, I'm prob I'll probably wait till the socks are done. Maybe not. We'll see. You'll see next week. I think things have kind of settled down for a while, uh, so hopefully I'll be back to a weekly recording schedule. All right, well, thanks for tuning in, and have a great week, and I'll see you next time. Bye! <laughs>
Thank you.